my name is Lauren McMeekin and I work for Braemar Castle, which is the only community-run castle in Scotland. Now, I have to say, most of the village has been involved in the castle's regeneration, handling jobs such as gardening, historical research, fundraising, taking tours, planning special events, and basically anything else that you can think of. Uh, the castle itself is a microcosm of Highland history. It was built as a hunting lodge, uh, used as a garrison after the Jacobite rebellions before becoming a holiday house. But the castle isn't an artefact, it's part of the village. Our volunteers know this castle inside and out, and it's what gives it its personal touch. It's an unvarnished history. The community took over the lease in 2007, and a huge amount has been achieved. Derelict Castle was made ready to open. Repairs are ongoing, so far costing £400,000. Uh, the next challenges are repairing the Harling, installing the heating, planning a visitor centre. And all the while, this is going on the public visit. I'm used to shouting at people. Uh, one on the ground, specifically a bank shaft. Oh, industrial archaeology. Oh, dirty, ugly, dangerous. Fill it up, knock it down, build houses on it. No, don't, because it's important that people understand the work done by the miners, specifically in my case, the ones in North Lanarkshire, which is now the uh, side of the Fourth and Clyde Canal, they were the people who dug the coal. The coal was the engine of the Industrial Revolution, and the Industrial Revolution is the reason why we live the way we live now. So we've got some money from Heritage Rossary Fund to look at the lives of the miners along the Fourth and Clyde Canal, not just the miners, but the Banksmen and the bridgemen and the various people doing other things. Uh, we're looking for a title of horse if anyone's got one spare. Um, but what we're hoping to do is make people aware of how important the work done by their ancestors, their fathers, grandfathers was. And in, in doing so, to make them understand that their history is valuable and will make them feel better too. Hello. Fundraising is one of the main challenges heritage groups and organisations are currently facing. With cuts to public spending and a dependence on sources such as the Heritage Lottery Fund, it's a very good time to look at where you currently receive support and how you might diversify your income streams. The good news is, Resourcing Scotland's Heritage is here to inspire your fundraising. We are delivering training right across Scotland in fundraising from private sources. So we focus on individuals, companies and charitable trusts. The training will help you to de uh, develop new skills in fundraising and will provide you with the tools and techniques to make your fundraising more strategic and therefore more effective. Our overall aim is to help to make your organisation and the heritage sector as a whole more sustainable. Please come and see me at my stall at the back there for more information and come along to my workshop at midday. Thank you very much, Dick. Uh, okay. Um, I thought I'd take a minute of your time um, to tell you about one of the things that we've been, well, the toys we've been playing with over the last um, year or so, and how it might be of some uh, use. So the thing is this um, yellow cardboard box. On the front it says the adventure starts here, um, and it pairs up very nicely with a mobile phone. So in that sense it's great for community projects because a lot of people in the community have got mobile phones. Um, and it's also great because these things are relatively cheap, between five and ten pounds you can pick them up for. What you can do is you can take a photograph, a 360 degree photograph of a, of a place, you can put that into a nice trail and take people back to where, take people to that, take people to that place. You can also put it on Google Maps. Yes. Do I need that machinery? Yes. Yes. Ahloa, this building on the way into Fortingall, on the hillside uh, across the Lion. It's one of five tenements built by the fourth Earl of Bredolven around 1800 for his estate workers. The Earl had to rehouse the cotters displaced by his land reforms. It consists of ten one-up, one-down uh, dwellings, six along the centre block, plus two at each end, and could have housed more than 60 souls. At one time, 26 children from Achloa walked to school in Portingall across the river. Buildings of Scotland describes it as a steading with Gothic windows to the upper floor and with a gabled centrepiece containing the Gothic entrance. Uh, in fact, the real entrances are behind in the south. Scotland's urban past makes you an urban detective. Not two seconds, Oops, two seconds. <laughs> Too quick. Keen there. Scotland's urban past makes you an urban detective 
And you know, remember Scotland's rural past? Well, this time it's urban. And its population is of 3,000 plus, and it's totally urban. Diverse groups of all kinds. We want to work with everybody, all ages. It could be you want to make an interactive exhibition or a digital trail, a comic book, or drama. We don't care. Free training to help you capture your project, to capture your space, to share creatively, to engage other people. So far, we've helped local residents create a virtual tour of their medieval tower. We've helped teenagers film their skate park. A women's history group create a national digital trail of 19th century women's anti-slavery activism. And there's so much more. Are you excited? Of course you are. You want to get to know us. You want to come to our stall, sign up. You want to come to our workshop this afternoon. You want to talk to me. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Are we ready to things. start? Yeah, we can go. Um, so I'm a member of the Youth Board, which is the new thing for Scotland's Urban Past, which is made up of a group of 16 to 24 year olds. There are 20 of us overall, and we're from all over Scotland. Um, this has given us a good chance to explore our interests and learn new skills and meet new people, um, which has been really good, and also contribute to the Scotland's Urban Past project and also the wider heritage sector. So, so far, we have done a few things, uh, quite a lot of things actually. Um, we worked with Diggit uh, over there and we blocked some tattoo two theme tours of Edinburgh with Sojourn Hall. We helped some Paisley school pupils um, survey their school with Scotland's Urban Past. We also worked with the Glasgow Disability Alliance to develop a new perspective on Glasgow through the window of a taxi, which is quite interesting. Um, we've attended career development workshops for ourselves and we've also begun to develop a national Scotland Urban Past competition. Um, look out for us next week, we're taking over the Twitter feed, so we'll try not to cause too much trouble. And thank you very much for listening. Hello, I'm Kristen. I'm from the University of the Highlands and Islands, and I've spent the last 10 years mentally in Caduce, and I'm now on, on, on the ground there. Um, I've come to tell you about a heritage festival. We're running up to our fourth one now. Um, last year, we focused on this beautiful man up there. You can hear more about him if you come and visit our stall. Lovely boy. And um, next year, we're on the 18th century. We've got music, we've got poetry, we've got art, we've got history. We're looking for more archaeology. Uh, come and play with books, come and read poetry, come and do your art. Uh, Come and wander around the streets of Kenyusi. It's the best town in the Highlands. I think you And it brings together academics, uh, locals, folks from all over the world. Last year, with 80 people from as far as Canada, Iceland, and Ireland, uh, come to share their love of Kenyusi, the beautiful man, and the town. And we hope to see all of you there because it's wonderful. Abbott House, Dunfermline, 20 years a heritage centre, one day a museum. The oldest domestic building in Dunfermline, it occupies a prime site close to the Abbey, next door to the new museum site. Its doors finally closed to the public this summer. The symptom, no more money. The underlying cause, local politics and personal rivalries. But what have we actually lost? What is being mourned? The heritage still exists after all. The true loss to us is the communities that made up the Abbott House ecosystem. Like an old oak, Abbott House supported its own varied flora, Volunteers, groups such as U3A, folk on work placements, families, local charities, teachers, students, people doing things that they maybe could have done anywhere, but they didn't. They sought out or stumbled across Abbott House and they kept coming, helping to transform a house into a home, a home we have for the time <coughs> lost. Scotland's first Heritage Angel Awards exceeded all our expectations with more than 80 fantastic nominations from all over the country from people helping investigate, protect and celebrate all sorts of heritage. People came from Wick, Nink, Afford, Ellen, Leith, Creef and Loch Lomond Shores, from Caneal, Galashiels, Badnock, Gairlock, Fortrose, Forest, <laughs> Kilmarnock and more, from all over the country really. They worked on shipyards, stations, saunas, mining, churches, people, war memorials, digitising, digging, guiding, old ports, French forts and pictures caves, just about everything. Thanks go to Lord, Lord Weber, to the organising partners, but most of all to you, the people who gave your time, your energy and your enthusiasm to care for our amazing heritage. It was a privilege to celebrate your achievements in 2015, so please consider a nomination for 2016. Okay, the Shielding Project is an education initiative looking back at shielding life in the Scottish Highlands. Our key focus is using the historic environment for outdoor learning and learning for sustainability. Our HLF funded Shielding Life project focuses on the physical and cultural heritage of historic transhumans in Scotland, or taking cattle into the hills during the summer to graze. Shielings had rich cultural traditions of song, a story placed in vernacular building and land use, and we aim to investigate and share these traditions um, with kids and teachers at a project space near Struy in Glenstrath Farrow. In 2016, we're going to focus on the built heritage of the Shieling through our archaeological investigation of the Altmorick site. Um, I'm going to survey, excavate, do some environmental archaeology and some historical document research. 
And this is going to inform the reconstruction of a turf sheeting uh, on site, which will be used with school and youth groups and for professional development with teachers. So look at the website and, um, and, and please uh, support us. <laughs>